All right, guys, today we're gonna to be breaking up the trend of knives a little bit and talking about smart watches. And today we're talking about the Apple Watch Ultra. And we're gonna talk about whether or not I think that this thing is worth $750. Now, undoubtedly, this little watch is quite expensive, but let's run over some of the reasons why I think it might be worth it. All right, so let's get this thing off my darn wrist. Now, admittedly, this watch is pretty darn big. It comes in at 49 millimeters and especially on my little wrists, it definitely looks like a monster. However, I do know that and it is, I think, one of the biggest reasons why this watch actually usually, if you go on places like eBay or resellers like, uh, you know, Facebook Marketplace, you can usually find these watches for well under $750. That's because a lot of people, I think, especially females with smaller wrists, end up buying these watches, not fully understanding what basically 50 millimeters of watch looks like, and then realize that that is way too much watch. And that is definitely something that even I occasionally look down, I'm like, ah, oh, that's quite big on my wrist, but I do like some of the features it has, so I live with it. In addition to, I think it's also worth noting, Apple is very, very keen of showing you what the front of this watch looks like, but they don't really like to show you, just in all fairness, how thick this watch is. In fact, this thing is rather, rather thick. And, uh, so thick that I'm actually going to take this uh, little caliper, dial caliper here. Let me actually make sure that it's zeroed out in fairness. Um, and then let's actually see how thick this guy is because I think it's pretty chonky. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so it is nearly half an inch thick and that is just measuring the um, thickness of the body, not quite this uh, little indentation right here. But yeah, so this thing is just shy. It's 0.457. Um, so that is, so it's about 0 0.457 thousandths of an inch thick. So that is very, very close to a full half inch thick. So it is hefty. But that being said, this guy does pack a lot in it. And that is part of the reason why I wanted to buy it. However, with all that thickness, it does actually have a lot packed into it. It does have 32 gigabytes of on like built-in storage, which I think is kind of crazy for a smartwatch, but could be potentially helpful. But most of all, what this guy packs in it is a pretty darn big battery. Now, unfortunately, Apple never has specified how many milliamp hours of battery are actually in this thing, but it is rated up to 36 hours of normal use and I think around like 60 hours in power saver mode. And that is one of the biggest reasons, as I've mentioned in other videos, as to why I wanted to get this watch. Because most smart watches of this caliber are going to offer you a lot or substantially less um, life as far as, um, as far as battery life goes. Now, what do I mean by like of this caliber? I mean that there are a lot of Garmin watches out there and I get genuinely a lot of comments like, oh, why aren't you running a Garmin watch? Or why are you running you know, an Apple watch instead? And the biggest reason why that is, or the biggest reason why I like running my Apple watches is because they play so well with things like text messages, notifications, and they sync really well with a phone. A lot of your Garmin watches are going to be okay at this, but they don't really specialize in actually the everyday life side of things. And so if I was just going purely for battery life, Garmin definitely has better watches than this guy here. And I even when I used to run my Samsung, I used to run a Suunto watch that was, you know, definitely more like I had a GPS built into it for like doing different navigation stuff. And it was a really competent watch for doing those types of things. However, it wasn't very good for everyday life. Like it was hard to respond to texts. It was not super easy to use or intuitive. And once again, it didn't really talk to my phone that well. That is one of the biggest things I love about the Apple kind of ecosystem people talk about is that, you know, you can, with this watch, control things like your Apple AirPods, your, I can unlock my computer with it, I can unlock my phone with it, I can do all kinds of different things. Not to mention, too, this one is also cellular activated or cellular connected, so this thing in a pinch can also function as a phone. It can make calls, it can send texts independently of my phone. And those are things that I, from an everyday standpoint, really 
enjoy. So while I do want a watch that has lots of outdoor capabilities and you know a good GPS, what I actually use my watch for most of the time is far more mundane tasks. And it's kind of like having a good knife, right? You know, oftentimes a good utility knife or a good EDC knife is a really good utility knife. As fun as having a full out and out tactical knife would be and you know something like a double-edged dagger. The reason why you don't see many people carrying something like a double-edged dagger is because they're not as utilitarian and 90% of the time we're doing utility tasks. We're not defending our lives. As fun as that would sound, you know, and then moreover in that small circumstance of defending my life, I would probably rather take a firearm, right? So, you know, getting back to the core, that's what has drawn me and kept me with Apple Watches for so long. They're just really good utility watches. Now, I will say some things I am excited to test with this guy is their backtrack feature on this watch. And the backtrack feature, at least supposedly how Apple has marketed it, is that it is supposed to, you know, passively keep track of you, especially while you are, you know, like outdoors. And you can hit your little orange button right here. You can quick. Uh, like hot link this to the backtrack feature. So if you do get turned around or lost in the wilderness, all you have to do is hit your little orange button and it'll show you where you have been to help get you back on the right track. Now this is very similar to things like, I have my Garmin GPS already set up to do. I have it um, breadcrumb, uh, the breadcrumb feature enabled, I should say, on my Garmin GPSs already. So that is something that's handy and I look forward to testing that. But also too, uh, I do think that this will be pretty darn good for fitness and activity tracking as well. Um, I do love to use my watches for predominantly gauging, you know, like altitude as I go higher and higher up like mountains. Um, it's nice to know how far I've come and how far I have to go uh, as far as altitude goes. So I do like that feature too and hopefully the increased um, or improved GPS will help with that feature. So yeah, there isn't too much to say about this guy. I mean, there are some other handy features. I like the pulse oximetry of it and being able to tell um, your blood O2 level on the fly. That is something that I do find, you know, useful and handy and helpful, um, but overall, those are the primary things that I like. Another thing I will say that I do genuinely like about the increased size, so this is a, like I said, 49 millimeter, this is the largest watch uh, Apple makes, is that, as you can see here, um, with it trying to get me to enter my passcode, you can see that it has a very generous keyboard, and say, like, when you're texting, this has, you know, a full-on uh, keyboard for you to type on and I do really like that it helps with the accuracy of messages and once again because this is such a big screen you know it even has like uh, word suggestions so as you're typing it's a lot like texting on a phone which is very nice so once again you do give up some factors of um, you know convenience or ease of carry for you know the ability to type things faster and more accurately in addition to I will say I think the other big draw for me was the fact that this is a very durability uh, or this I should say that this uh, watch the smartwatch was made with durability in mind and in fact it might be one of the more or most durable watches smartwatches I should say out there on the market because it does use a sapphire crystal for the display and it also uses a titanium body so this is full titanium and then of course you have a uh, ceramic down here which they've been using ceramic on the bottom side of their cases forever but the fact that they went to titanium and sapphire for your crystal is really nice so i am happy and excited to see how durable that is because I know my previous watch and I just had a previous like generic series five. So it had the aluminum case with the glass um, as far as like the crystal goes, it was just glass and that guy got scratched up and uh, definitely it looked worn. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing and I don't mind my, you know, products or my gear that I use every day looking worn. It's just nice to have, especially a scratch free um, watch face because if you're looking at it in the right lighting, um, a really scratched up watch face is very hard to, you know, like read properly. So I like that. I like the durability side of this and yeah, 
overall, I think it's pretty cool. It does carry over a lot of features from the Series 7 uh, smartwatches or Apple watches, I should say, um, such as, as you guys could probably see with this like green background here. I think it looks nice. I think it looks classy. It's not too bad at all. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's too much more to say. I will say, um, I do think it's interesting how they chose a kind of guarded bezel on this side and a guarded uh, button on that side. Um, I'm definitely curious to see how those go. One thing I will say too about this little orange button, I'm not the largest fan of it currently because oftentimes if you are familiar with Apple watches, you know, usually when it comes down to Usually when it comes down to grabbing an Apple Watch to click, you know, either of these two buttons, you usually have some, you know, positive pressure on the other side. So even if you're holding it like this, it's very easy to bump that orange button when you're trying to press this guy, especially if you're trying to like hit and hold this thing. So yeah. Anyways, those are the kind of features to it. It does, as you guys probably just saw there as well, have the siren feature. Siren feature is interesting. Um, that can also help with rescue, but uh, I don't think it's like a huge uh, game changer, at least not for me. Um, I don't really think that uh, sirens like the end of the world are like the best thing to beat. And I would like to see um, I know originally in the like promotional marketing for this watch, they wanted to add something like a personal locator beacon feature to this watch. And I know that there's hopefully, once again, we'll see how that goes, but I know that there were quite a few features that were going to be after release add-ons or updates to the Apple Watch Ultra. So I'm curious to see if that personal locator beacon gets carried into this and actually is used because that is something that I would genuinely be interested in predominantly because I do have personal locator beacons like my Rescue Link ACR um, and of course there are other good offerings out there like um, like the Garmin in reaches but I would not mind like I wouldn't mind genuinely if this had a personal locator beacon feature to it because of redundancy like I'm not going to say no to have extra survival features, especially on something that I'm already gonna be carrying. Like if this is something that I'm already gonna use out when I'm hiking on a mountain or whatnot, it's nice to have that as an extra feature. So I would not say no to it if it came along, but of course, I will also caution, even if there is a personal locator beacon mode for this watch, definitely I would say, you know, carry other redundant systems. Like I'm not gonna get rid of my ACR rescue link 400 and i wouldn't recommend anyone get rid of like their garmin in reaches or you know their uh, different plbs that are out there so definitely something that i would like to see but uh yeah we'll see how it goes that is something that i am curious to see out of this but uh yeah anyways guys that's kind of the brief overview of it do i think it's worth 750 dollars i would say that this is a lot like so to officially answer that question, like, is this worth $750? I think that it really comes down to your personal use case. I think that uh, this is personally worth se or around $750. Once again, I was able to get mine for quite a bit less, um, but ultimately, I like the fact that this is something that I'm gonna use every single day and it has a lot of functionality for specialized situations like diving, like hiking, like mountaineering, um, like going up, you know, it, it get, does a really good job at tracking different health or vital st statistics and it will and has the potential to have more um, kind of rescue options to it. So if you get lost, you get turned around, there's the backtrack feature, there's the siren feature, and hopefully in the future, there will be a personal locator beacon feature that can be added to this. And once again, this isn't a singular replacement for any specific tool, just like how this would not replace a you know, specific dive watch. I would still recommend wearing a dive watch if you go diving, but this is a nice um, kind of add-on or something that you can carry to help make your life a little bit easier and a little bit safer. Um, so anyways, that is everything I have to say about the Apple Watch Ultra and why I bought mine. As always, guys, God bless. And I'm